G'day, my name's Paul Morrison. I'm a musician, former pastor, radio announcer and chaplain. And Creating Communities have kindly invited me to conduct a series of interviews across this season. And we'd love you to follow us. And we're joined at the moment with Alan Tranta, founder of Creating Communities. Thank you for joining us, Alan. Pleasure. Now, Alan, you've lived through a couple of ice ages and world wars and um, obviously been around a while. What's your advice for helping us get through this one? Thank you, Paul, for the very kind introduction. The, the key to this particular pandemic is to think about our history and to recognise that until recently, we lived together in community and were very dependent upon our neighbour for our daily life and our survival when there was trouble. So daily life was food. There was the farmer, the baker, the butcher. So we lived in community or close with each other and we depended upon each other. And when there was an external threat, and my favorite television show was The Vikings. So when the Vikings came, the village huddled together and protected itself. So that was several thousand years of history. And it's only been in recent times that we've become so individually focused and our technology even since the Industrial Revolution, there's been a movement towards being able to just be yourself wherever you want to be and not need your neighbour. I think today is the time when we recognise that even though this is a pandemic, that the solutions for us lie on our street, lie in our street with our neighbours, our responsibility to them and their care of us. So even though it's global, the solution is hyper-local. Wow. And uh, what will you and your wife be doing during this to kind of, I guess, actuate some of these things? Well, the first thing is we are going to follow every instruction that we get from the government. It's just so important that we take personal responsibility for what we do so that we don't put anybody at risk. Because even though she and who's much younger than I, she and I might be safe, we don't want to expose those who are vulnerable to the risk of suffering. So firstly, we'll do that. Secondly, we'll support each other. So important that, and that we support our loved ones closely. And it's easy for her and I, because we married, live together, work together, so it's gonna be pretty constant. But already, our children and grandchildren are one slight step away. And so we'll support them as best we can. We'll support the people around us the best we can. We'll make those telephone calls to people who might be lonely, who might be going through a little bit of Turmoil, turmoil themselves, because people will suffer through this, things will happen. So we will do things for ourselves, but we'll also try and do things for others. You mentioned there, obviously, looking back at history and how we used to cope as a village, but then we look at technology, which in some ways allows us to be isolated. But with COVID, we're, we're, we're encouraged not to be tactile. We can't be you know, living in the village. So technology then becomes, like you say, phone calls got a solution to, to the problem we're in. It's so simple. We can just write a little message on a piece of paper and put it in our neighbor's letterbox and say to them, this is my name, this is my telephone number, my email address, what's yours? If you need a hand with anything, ring me. So we've made contact. And we could do that with people on three or four houses on either side of us, on other side of the road. So we've, we're connected and just offer to help do the things which they can't do. Because we have to assume that there are people who can't get to do their shopping. There are people who might need something from the pharmacy. And at times we might need something and we have to be willing to ask. So that's one easy way is actually to be connected with our neighbours by f making a physical, physical connection, which we then follow up either by telephone or digitally. You obviously uh, live in one of the suburbs of Perth, you have a wife. What are you gonna be doing at this time to try and connect with the people in your neighbourhood? We live in an apartment building, so we've already made close contact with the people who, who are near neighbours because their family is overseas. And so we've agreed that once a week, we'll spend some time together in the right sort of environment, just so that they've got someone that's of support to them. And we'll figure out how to actually do that with other people um, living in the flats around us. So hopefully they'll be doing similar things inside their own flats. We've already noticed that there are some people on the street. What we might be suggesting, and this is what we're suggesting to lots of folk, is that at five o'clock every afternoon, 
they go out into their front yard or onto their balcony and have a drink together, even though they're the right distance apart. And it can be a cup of tea or a glass of water or a lemonade, whatever it tickles your fancy, but just check in at five with, with your neighbours so that there is a physical connection. And on Sunday mornings, do the same with a family picnic, just your family on your front lawn or on your balcony and have everybody do it at 10 o'clock on, on, the, on the Saturday or Sunday morning just so that people can see there are, there are people around. Take a musical instrument. Play bingo in the street. Play battleship. Invent games that you can play together without actually physically touching each other. There are so many things that we can do to make sure that people are connected and obey what the government is saying about social distance. So you, you can see us starting a movement where we are. Well, five o'clock, everyone's out there. Uh, I don't know if you saw the thing that went viral. I think it was out of Italy where they had people on their balconies all playing different instruments and making a band. You think we could get creative about the way we include one another in our neighbourhood? Look, I think it's possible to do anything if we put our mind to it. I was even wondering whether your old radio station could, with their list of musicians that they've got locally in Western Australia, could have, if it was legal, someone just going down the street and just letting people know what street it is in the middle of the road at five o'clock playing their guitar and singing. Amazing. That would just be so fantastic. And bring and people then, and for people like my age, they have to be the 60s songs so that we would know the words, but it would be a way of actually bringing people out. And people have got musical instruments. Yeah. So why, you know, have them play it as well. But there are all sorts of ways that we can make that, that small step to actually create social connection even though we're socially, physically distant. Yeah. What, what is your practical stronger together tip that you want to share? I'd like to see people do two things. I'd love to see people, at the moment when you walk down the street, people are looking away. I think it would be fantastic if people made eye contact, still say the right distance and smile. We're in this together. And in the car, the old country greeting, it'd be great to see people doing that. How are you going? We're on the street together. We're, go we're going through something together. I'm okay. I hope you're okay. Yeah, brilliant. Alan, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's it for today. Remember, we've got more of these discussions coming up. You can check them out on the Stronger Together website, and uh, there's going to be some great ones. I look forward to chatting with you then. Until then, stay safe. Don't forget, as Alan said, encourage the people around you, and remember to follow the government's advice around COVID-19. Thank you.